2018 was a sweet year for us. Literally, and next on our list of most memorable food experiences includes the best baklava we've tasted in years. Everyone who comes to Istanbul is looking for the best baklava, and I'm often asked that question, where exactly can you find the best? Well, it's hard, it's like asking people what's the best gelato in Florence or what's the best pizza in Napoli. But this I can say, if you want some really good baklava, you gotta try this place. And you can tell it's good quality baklava just by looking at the lines. Karakoy Gulolu in Istanbul's Karakoy district is a family-owned pastry shop that's been making baklava since 1820. Despite their success, they only have a single branch in order to ensure quality. Theirs follows a traditional Ottoman recipe, 44 layers of phyllo, generously filled with walnuts or pistachio and sweetened with sherbet. They're all handmade, baked fresh every day. It's obvious I have a sweet tooth. Well, this tooth had a chance to enjoy one of the best chocoholic experiences possible in Switzerland, the land of chocolate. My go-to place for a chocolate fix in Zurich is Sprungli Confusery, a family-owned cafe and chocolate shop that's been around since 1859. I know this looks like a lot for just one person, but it's just a sampling of the best Sprungli has to offer. Some of these are really, really popular, like the Luxembourgli, just like little macarons, but very different. Then, of course, the truffe du jour, or truffles of the day, made on the spot, on the same day. And, of course, their famous hot chocolate. And, of course, their cakes. So, did I try them all? You bet I did. I loved every bite of it. I know it's a lot of chocolate, but how many times are you in Zurich, right? <laughs> If there's one thing I definitely love with chocolate, it's ice cream. In 2018, we went out of our way to try the best. Anyone and everyone who's been to Florence will say that they've had their best gelato in the city, which kind of makes sense because Florence was the birthplace of gelato. But here's the thing, some of the best gelaterias are actually far from the tourist trail and away from the historic center of the city. Shops like Badiani. We got wind of Badiani from local Florentine foodies who swear by the gelato superior quality and for one particular flavor that was invented in Florence by Badiani, Buon Talenti. Owner and master gelato maker Paolo Pomposi showed us how his famous Buon Talenti is made on site. The flavor named in honor of the 16th century Florentine, credited with inventing gelato, has been copied by others, though Paolo says never been surpassed by the original that he makes here every morning. It's so creamy, it's so... And no vanilla, right? No, no, no. No, no vanilla, no, no. just egg and Me. just a cream. cream. Milk. It's so natural. Sugar, the taste. Beautiful, beautiful. Buon talente. We all know gelato pairs well with cream, sweet on sweet. But what if I paired it with vinegar instead? It's possible, and it's great, but only with the traditional balsamic vinegar of Modena. We visited Acetaio de Balgo, a family farm that produces Aceto Balsamico di Modena Tradizionale, certified aged balsamic vinegar that uses local ingredients and ancient techniques borrowed from winemaking. Aged in barrels from 12 to 25 years and beyond, the final product is a dark and viscous liquid with intense, complex flavors, a lovely acidity that matches perfectly with food of a contrasting flavor, like its ultimate partner, Panmejano de Jano cheese. What do you think about? Perfect combination. Okay. I can't think of a better combination. The point of combining food of contrasting taste and texture is to create balance. We got this time-tested formula right once more by combining fat and acid all over again in a traditional Munich beer hall. 
the whole beer hall experience is more than just about drinking beer, obviously. It's about, well, enjoying live music, it's enjoying the chatter, the noise of the other tables around you, and of course, the food. And here at the Hofbrand House, it's, it's only seasonal ingredients, seasonal dishes. And in this case, it's winter cabbage. We have some pretzels, which is all year round, but it's a staple in every beer hall. And this Piazza Resistance over here, which is like, I'm told, this portion of the pig. It's not a pig's knuckles, it looks like pig's knuckles, but it's actually much meatier than that. Schweinshaxe is a popular Bavarian dish of slow roasted leg of pork, which locals pair almost exclusively with beer. Dark beer. I say, ya yeah, to that. Though I admit, the loud singing and toasting all around adds to the taste of it. Some food combinations, however, are so rare you'll need to travel to its source, and only in certain seasons of the year, in order to fully relish the taste. One such place is Alba in Piedmont, the home of Italy's prized Tartufo Bianco and Barolo wine. Apart from the amazing wines of the region, there's one other thing that brings so many food-obsessed travelers to Alba. It's a truffles. And this is a truffle season. And this is one of the best restaurants that serves truffles. The Ristorante Dulcis Vitis is a sweet life indeed. The seasonal menu highlights dishes with fresh foraged white truffles from Alba, acknowledged as the best and most expensive in the world. These are shaved into slivers tableside to add its unique intense aroma and flavor to simple dishes like tayarin, egg noodle pasta and butter, or something even simpler like fried egg, so as not to overwhelm the taste of the precious truffles. And when paired with a mature Barolo, fantastico. In hindsight, all our best meals have ended one way, with a cup of coffee. And in 2018, we finally came around to discovering the origins of our favorite delicacy. We trekked to the village of Tuba in Benguet province to see the local Arabica coffee made from bean to cup. It starts as cherries on a tree, plucked when ripe and ready, then dried, processed, hulled, after which the beans are inspected and sorted for quality. But that's only half the journey. The green beans undergo a further process of roasting, grinding, and brewing or it's served in a cup. A good cup should taste like coffee, but a truly great cup will reflect the coffee tree's environment, a term connoisseurs call terroir. To taste a terroir is actually a phrase popularized by wine enthusiasts and vintners. Not to mean that you should taste the soil literally, yuck, but how a wine's character and flavor profile mirrors the elements of its natural environment. No, your eyes aren't playing any tricks on you. I know this looks like a vineyard, but actually I'm standing on the rooftop. Yes, the rooftop of Antinori's winery and headquarters here in Tuscany. We visited Marchesi Antinori's new state-of-the-art winery in the hills of Chianti Classico, just after the 2018 harvest was over. The aristocratic family that spans 26 generations of wine-making tradition is Italy's largest producer and among the most highly acclaimed in the world. They have estates all over the country, but it's here in Chianti Classico where their first wines were crafted in 1385 and continue to be made with a native Sangiovese grape. It was the Marchesa, Allegra Antinori herself, who took me through the tasting notes of her family's revered wines. Since Tuscan wines are always best appreciated when paired with Tuscan food, Allegra invited me to taste the true terroir of her native land with a typical Tuscan meal overlooking her Tuscan homeland. Of course, with a Chianti Classico in hand. Indeed, there's no better way to understand a terroir than to eat and drink in the midst of the people and the land that defines it. A restaurant committed to sourcing ingredients directly from farmers is another way to taste the terroir without having to travel to the countryside, which makes sense, especially for the busy Milanese. It's not every day you get to eat in the kitchen of two 
very famous chefs in Milan and that we're having the verdura al damare verdura da amare it's a play on the word amare which is love and at the same time bitter because the vegetables and things that we're having here are quite bitter so very playful but also very very beautiful on the plate Wow. Chefs Alessandro Negrini and Fabio Pisani of Milan's two Michelin star in Lugo di Aimo and Nadia bring farm to fork by insisting only on fresh seasonal produce from small farmers throughout Italy. And you have a personal relationship with the suppliers. Yes, correct. Of course. With the supplier, with the father of supplier, with the grandfather the of The generations of suppliers. Yeah, our list of memorable food experiences concludes with lessons from local legends, the chefs and artisans who are gracious enough to share their secret recipes with us. Bakers like Benjamin Auerhammer, owner of Our Hammer Bakery in the impossibly charming and picturesque Bavarian town of Oberammergau. Benjamin and his team patiently teach me how Bavarian specialties like König Ludwig brought, and their world-famous pretzels are made, or rather, handmade. And how can I ever forget my personal tutorial on authentic Vietnamese spring rolls? Part of it because of the secrets imparted. Hint, it has to do with the rice paper preparation and the folding technique. But definitely also because of the setting, in full view of Vietnam's fabled Halong Bay. But my all-time favorite in 2018 was watching the legendary Maria Carati of Bologna's award-winning Caminetta d'Or. Still hard at work on her family's famous tortellini bolognese and tagliatelle al ragù. The 82-year-old icon of Bologna has been handcrafting pasta since she was 14 years old. Do the math and that's 68 years of pasta-making knowledge shared with me. Now, isn't she so lovely? Yeah. Warm people like Maria represent the 25th best memory on our list because like our own family, it's in their company that any meal, no matter how simple or wherever it comes from, becomes truly special and memorable. Thank you so much for having me. And that's all for this special holiday edition of Executive Class. I'm David Saldran. Happy holidays, everyone.